How's it going guys? My name's Evan and welcome to episode 28 of my poker vlog. We're here at Horseshoe Casino Baltimore. Going to be hopping into some 1-3. You know, I've just been getting my cheeks clapped in these past couple sessions. So today I really just want to focus, make good decisions and have some fun. Also, there's going to be a meetup game here hosted by Close to Broke and Wolfgang Poker on April 24th. I'll be playing in that. I hope to see some of you guys there. And with that being said, let's get into it. We buy in for the max of 400. It doesn't take us long to pick up Queen Jack suited in middle position. Also, sorry if you see some camera shake in this video. For some reason, I was tapping the living shit out of my leg. I couldn't tell you why. Anyways, we make it 15 to go over a $6 under the gun straddle. The player to my left makes the call and the under the gun straddler calls as well. So we go to a flop three ways that comes ace jack three all diamonds. The under the gun player checks, I check, and the player to the left of me checks as well. The turn comes a 10 of spades, and when the under the gun player checks, I decide to bet $15 here, looking to charge any hands containing one diamond. We end up getting called by both players here, so going to the river I'm looking to shut down, but then the river comes another jack. The under the gun player checks, and I'm looking to squeak out just a little more value, so I put out a small bet of $30, and now the player to my left goes deep into the tank. He thinks over his decision for over a minute, and eventually decides to make the call. The under the gun player folds, we show our hand, and we're good. The player to my left ended up having ace-4 offsuit. Here we look down at pocket sixes in the small blind. There's a bunch of limpers before it gets to me. I tried to make it 15, but I accidentally made it 16 since I was the small blind. And apparently $16 was a reasonable price because we end up getting five callers. So we go to a flop six ways that comes king 10 deuce with two hearts. Before it even gets to me, there's an all in and a call. So obviously we have an easy fold here, but if we flop the set, we could have won a huge pot. So definitely something to keep in mind going forward tonight. A couple hands later, we get slightly downgraded to pocket fives. I'm under the gun here and make it 15 to go. And again, we get a bunch of callers. We go to a flop five ways out of position that comes queen four deuce with two spades. I check it, middle position bets 30. The button raises it to 75. And then the small blind goes all in over top of that for about 250. When it folds back to me, again, I just can't make the call here, so I decide to fold. And they ended up getting it all in three ways, two flush draws versus top pair. So here's a pretty interesting hand that went down. The player to my right is a good player that's been raising a lot. I'm in middle position and look down at pocket tens. After a couple limps, the player to my right makes it 18 to go. I really wish I 3-bet this because of how active this player has been, but in the moment, I believe I decided to call because this was a pretty big raise for this game. The player to my left calls and the small blind calls as well. So we go to a flop 4 ways that comes 9-7-7 with 2 hearts. It checks to the player to my right. He continues for $25. I think there is some merit to raising here, but in the moment, I decided to call. And interestingly enough, both players behind called as well. So going to the turn, I'm very confused on where I am in this hand. The turn comes to four of clubs, putting two flush draws on the board now. It checks to the initial raiser again, and this time, he decides to bet $60. With two players behind me still to act, I am very confused on what to do in this spot. In the moment, I was thinking one of these guys has to have a seven, right? And if not, Maybe the initial raiser has pocket jacks and just has us crushed? I don't really have a read on the other two players behind still to act, but in reality, I think they would have raised if they had a 7 on the flop. After thinking it through a little longer, I just have no idea where I'm at and I decide to fold. The player behind me folds and the last player to act does make the call, so they ended up going heads up to a river of another 4. The initial raiser bet pretty big to about 240, and the other player went deep into the tank. After a minute or two of thinking, the other player decided to make the call. The initial raiser ended up having jack nine of diamonds for top two pair, and the player that called him 
ended up having queen nine of clubs for a top two pair with a queen kicker that also turned a flush draw. Looking back, I'm just not happy with how I played this hand. There was a ton of draws on the turn, and this all could have been avoided if I just three bet preflop. So made a mistake here, but definitely took a note of this hand. We go on and lose a few small pots and run a little cold before we get upgraded to a very good looking hand, Pocket Kings. There's a limp and a raise to 15 from the active player to my right. As mentioned in the Pocket 10's hand, we want to three bet this player more, and this is a good hand to do that. So I make it 50, I think there's merit to just making it 40 or 45, but it folds all the way back to him, and he thinks about it for a sec before folding. Definitely a little frustrating, but we need to be 3-betting this player more, especially with a slightly wider range of hands. About 30 minutes later, we get that exact opportunity. Here in middle position, we look down at pocket 9s. The player to my right makes it 15 to go. I decide to 3-bet it to 50. And now the player to my left cold calls the 3-bet, which is a little alarming, but he could just have a hand like ace-queen or king-queen here. It folds all the way back to the initial raiser, and he decides to make the call as well. So we go to a flop three ways that comes 7-5-5. Five, five. Great flop for my hand. The player to my right checks, and on this board, I don't want to bet too big if I want to get value. So I decide to bet one third pot to $50. The player to my left folds, and the player to the right folds as well. I like how I played this hand, and it was much needed as this brought my stack back to even. Only a couple hands later, we get upgraded to aces. I'm under the gun plus one and make it 15 a go and only get a call from middle position. So we see a flop heads up that comes king king five with two hearts. I decide to check it to him, not because I'm worried about him having a king, but because this specific board favors my range more and I think it's better to just go for two streets of value. After I check it, he decides to check it back. The turn comes a pretty interesting card, it comes another king. Now in the moment, I decided to bet $10, but looking back, I really should be checking this because again, this card favors my range more. And as expected, he decides to fold. Let me know what you guys think about this hand. And on the river, should I have checked as well, or should I have gone for a small bet on the river? Only five minutes later, we pick up pocket sixes on the button. There's a few limps before it gets to me, I decide to make it 15 to go, and we get a call from the small blind and the early position limper. Now before we see this flop, I'm going to need some help here. If you can smash that like button on the count of three, so we can flop quad sixes just like episode nine, that would be huge. Alright, here we go. One, two, three. Some of you actually did it because the flop comes seven six deuce with two diamonds. Even better, the early position limper decides to lead out for $25. Now when it gets to me, the early position limper only has about $50 behind after his bet. And I don't want to just call, have the small blind drill some BS straight on me, or have a turn card slow down the action. So I decide to raise it right away to $75. The small blind thinks about it for a sec and eventually folds. And when it gets back to the early position player, he decides to make the call. The turn comes the jack of spades, and I accidentally didn't raise it enough because the early position player still has $6 behind. On this turn card, he goes all in for his remaining $6, and when it gets to me, we have a very difficult decision here. I am totally kidding. Obviously, we made the call. The river comes the nine of clubs. I show my hand, and we're good. The early position player ended up having a seven offsuit, so I'm happy with my raise on the flop, so when that jack came on the turn, it didn't slow down the action, and we drag a pretty good pot here towards the end of the night. So the last hand of note, we're in the cutoff and look down at pocket jacks. There's a raise from early position at $12. It takes me a while to figure out how to stack chips, but eventually I 3-bet him to $40. It folds back to him, and it doesn't take him long on deciding to fold. At this point, it was getting pretty late, so I decided to book the win and hit the cage.
So we were in for 400, out for 516 for a profit of 116, over about four hours of play, bringing our 28 episode total to a profit of 574. Honestly, not a big win, still made mistakes, but it's nice to end the losing streak and give us some momentum going into this meetup game Sunday. I hope to see some of you guys there at that meetup game, but on top of that, I also got invited back to the 3-5 vloggers game at Maryland Live. I'm not sure if I should play in it, you know, last time didn't go so well, so I'm thinking if this Sunday meetup game goes well, I will play in it, but I would love your guys' feedback on if I should or if I shouldn't. But on top of that, make sure you check out my Twitter and Instagram at ESP Poker, and I'll see you in the next one.